everybody. So today um, I'm going to be trying something new. Hopefully it will be something that I can do on a weekly basis. Um, lately I've been reading a lot of retro video game magazines, so um, game magazines that are now oh, about 30 years old. So um, I was going through my collection and I have a really nice set of Nintendo Power magazines and I thought it would be fun to do a read along with it. Um, depending on your guys' um, suggestions and comments, I can add some gameplay to it. Um, I have a really nice mister setup, so we can get some really good um, video gameplay if you guys are interested in that. But for today, we're gonna, just going to do a read-along. Um, today, we're going to be doing Nintendo Power Volume 28. These are available on all, many, many um, internet archives, so you can read these in browsers if you want. So if you want to follow along with me, you can. But um, otherwise, you can just watch the video, and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's check it out. Alright, so we're going to do our read-along of Nintendo Power Volume 28. Um, I'm familiar with most of the games in this one, and there's some things that uh, we'll find out more about together So as we go through this. This one's in pretty good shape. We have a little splitting along the seam, but it's 100% readable. And this is actually, a, I think, a pretty good mix of, um, let me get this nice and centered, there we go. Pretty good mix of um, NES games and some NES, um, SNES games. Gotta get your subscription. It's not too harsh of a light on there, okay. So we're trying to avoid too much glare. And we get it nice and centered. There we go. So our, our contents. So September of 91. So I would have been in second grade. So this was when I was in second grade. I always like these mailers. Um, I didn't read them when I was a kid, but looking back through them now, they're fun to read. And so this one's discussing like different prizes that they're trying to brainstorm for um, the poll winners. So we have one about um, a life-size Mario um, raccoon. You actually get the Lego Marios now. Um, this person wants a jet pack, like the Rocketeer. And then this one wants to be genetically spliced into a um, raccoon. They want to be more like Mario. So our first game is Super Mario World. Of course, uh, almost everyone has played, played Super Mario at some point or another. It's such a good game. I, I really enjoyed a lot of the, the big changeover. I remember seeing it the first time and thought it looked just like a, a cartoon because it's so, it was such a big jump from the NES to the SNES. Um, just the color pal palette alone, you were so limited with the NES, so a lot of the game tones were very similar. And then to jump and see um, the SNES, it was just like like look at all these different greens down here. It was just really it was crazy. And then the wide variety of um, mobs in the game. It really was one of the best uh, games made. Certainly one of the best Super Nintendo games. I would personally put it pretty high as one of the best games ever made. It, it's, it was a hard, challenging game, but it was very fair. Um, it encouraged lots of replay. They had lots of fun secrets, um, stuff to share with other people, things to discover yourself. A ton of replay value. I mean, I probably replayed like these two zones like a like hundred times. Then I get bored and stop playing, which the Forest of Pollution actually was one of my four favorite, uh, one of my more favorite zones, so. We have our big map of the zone. I like the switch, uh, the switch zones because each one was different and it was a way of like make, getting a lot of one-ups 
or coins. And one thing I noticed um, that was unusual were the first few levels of Mario World, uh, World weren't particularly easy. Um, like this one had the giant uh, bullets. And then this one, let's see. Uh, yes. And then that one with uh, like a lot of jumping and um, swinging around on the rotator. So, there were, so you definitely wanted to unlock the PAL before you got to uh, the third level. And defeating your first castle. And then when you get to um, Donut Plains is really when you, you realize there's a ton of different um, levels that you can replay to discover different secrets. So you want to get the key to unlock the one, and then you gotta get the key to here, and then unlock, 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 unlock. So many secrets. It's such a good game. Then in uh, the Vanilla Dome, still more secrets to, to find. I mean, most of the secrets, I, I learned a lot of them at daycare, watching the older kids play. But, I mean, this is the first game I ever, like, 100%ed, like, unlocked, like, the Star Road and everything. And a lot of it was just, like, watching others and then going back and playing it over again. So I have a lot of fun memories of, like, yeah, I did that. Oh, I know how to do that. It was a game where you could kind of show off, like, if you were good with, like, uh, maneuvers and stuff, especially when you had the cape. Like, I don't need the, the that switch turned on yet. I can just fly up there. The one with the moving blocks. That, that castle was, um, that was a good one. And then Wendy. I didn't, her castle was pretty hard. I always found the, the levels that had the little trice, the evil triceratops. Well, they were called rhinos. But I always thought they were triceratops. That was an odd uh, uh, boss to have to kill. And then of course we had the Bowser. The Valley of Bowser. I like this one because back and forth, Bowser would float and there would be lightning. And of course, the secret zone. And these levels were pretty good. Star World uh, levels are really good to play. The fun levels are like when you had like the little Yoshi and you gotta feed him. And then of course, actually, if we go back, my favorite Yoshi, where is he? Oh, is Blue Yoshi. That was my favorite Yoshi to get, because then he could fly across the whole, whole zone if you wanted. Then there was the specials. I remember those. I don't remember the levels that well. So that, that's something I would want to replay again. Try to 100% the game again. And here's some tricks. I don't know why you need to do the, the one-up loop. Just by playing the game you get so many extra lives. It's not really necessary. So the gray switches. I actually don't really remember ever seeing gray switches. Mm, I probably did. I just don't recall. And here we have Nestor. So, so this volume came out around the time as um, Bill and Ted. Uh, probably excellent adventure. Yeah, 
I saw that in the theater. That was, that was a fun movie to see in the theater. It's up to no good. So our first NES game is the Star Wars one. So there are multiple Star Wars games on the NES slash um, Famicom. Actually, I don't have this one, but I do have the Famicom um, Star Wars game, which is, this is a the, the bizarre Star Wars one um, that has Vader turn into various, uh, you fight him repeatedly and he turns into weird monsters. So, um, a really strange game. Mine's a little beaten up, but I mean like the, the gold varnish, it wasn't like a solid gold cart. So it's flaking off, but it still works perfectly good. It, it's a weird game, and it's, and it's worth checking out. But um, but this one, it just kind of follows the plot of the first game, but it just spends a ton of time on tattooing. So this one was by LucasArts and JVC. Um, this one was made in Japan, like developed here in Namco. So, in 1987. So, it, it still has the trademark. So, it was approved by LucasArts. Um, LucasFilms, not LucasArts. It's pretty funny. So. Move all these different power-ups. Sandcrawler, the cave. Gotta rescue RTD too. I think this is cool where you're inside the sand um, sandcrawler. I mean, it's just your standard platforming, but it, it's not a bad NES game. I've only pl I played just very little of it. I should go back and I'll we'll do some more. Uh, we'll get some gameplay of this. So the sand people are hard to beat. Rocks, and then of course in the caves. You have uh, the poison, poisonous dripping goo water. Moss Eisley. You gotta meet Han. Then you go and say Princess Leia. I always enjoy games where the you go from one genre to another. So we have the platforming, we have space battles, and almost like a shooter level. The TIE Fighter Pursuit, where you gotta shoot them down. I really like that when they do that in games, where it kind of sh um, changes around. Alright. So here we have Smash TV. Um, so this one, for the setup, you gotta have the two controllers. So controlling the shooting direction and then the running direction. Um, I played this one quite a bit on a arcade cabinet where you have the, the, the twin joysticks. And that's, that's a really good way to play this game. Maybe not so much on the NES because it, it's just awkward. Maybe if you have the, a pair of the dog bone controllers, that might be easier. But... Smash TV is pretty good. And just some of the... Some of the graphics. This guy always makes me think of, I'd buy that for a dollar. No I'm surprised this got past Nintendo. Those ladies aren't wearing very much. And then you're, you're picking up prizes and stuff. I always thought that was pretty fun. Like, 
you would get like TVs and stuff and it would tell you like you want a TV you want a refrigerator so double your firepower with a partner so many prizes friend along twice as much but also it means an extra pair of hands grabbing prizes even though you're a team, it's the big money alone that separates the champ grand champion from the common chumps who merely survive. The, the gameplay is uh, very similar if you played um, Binding of Isaac. That's a pretty good game. Um, I have that on the Switch. Where you run around and you can shoot in different directions with his tears. It's very very similar. It's kind of like... That game's like Smash TV meets um, Zelda. Like the original, original Zelda level, um, game. Yep, here we go. We have some classified information. Actually, a lot of these games, I don't I haven't played too much of these games. I remember the Thunderbirds when I was a little kid was like on a, a few channels. And I just remember it being really boring. Um, it was these, these um, puppets. And they had uh, space spacecrafts and jets. And everyone had their individual like little um, vehicle. There was a guy that had a submarine. It, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. So, stage select plus. And these were really useful before the age of, uh, like, Game Genie and stuff. And if you're playing different ways, um, a lot of, a lot of um, emulation has that stuff built in. Like, even my, my mystery, you can just browse the codes so you can do a lot of level jumping and whatnot but Adventures Alone, that's a good game so cut to the chase so you can conquer the first so that's that, that's quite the password oh here we have in um Castlevania 3, the, the help me code, where you'll get extra extra lives. And then here's Mega Man 3. I'll just press and hold the right control and then A. Huh. And then Adventure Island 2, so World Select. So, any of the eight, so you, this is a nice warp. I always like that, where if you if you replay like the first few levels like a, a million times, you can kind of get right to the area that you're still working on. But I never recall Adventure Island games being particularly hard. All right. So here we have Kickmaster. Um, I played this game for the first time fairly recently, and I was really surprised. It's a really solid game. Um, the thing about it is, it's only available. It was only the cart's only a North American release. There's no Famicom or European version of it, so it is a pricey game. But it's it's a really good game. It's kind of it. Its look makes me think of um, Nijin Gaiden, but the gameplay kind of makes me think of Castlevania in a way. But like the entire time, your your main weapon's kicking, and then as you level up, you get different types of kicks. So when you're finally like fairly high leveled, uh, it's amazing the the moves that your character can do with just like the simple NES controller. 
You can do like a, a ground stomp, a side kick, a kick up, a kick down. It's pretty good. So we have the vertical kick, the knee drop. The knee drop works really well. Um, the only thing I found with this game was this is a game you probably want to play like many times to get good with because of um, you have to get so close to the enemies to kill them that you take you're going to take a lot of damage when you're first playing it so that's going to be frustrating but once you get used to the the general mechanics of the game it's a lot of fun because like when you kick the mobs um stuff bursts out of them and you can you got to choose so of course you'll get like the power-ups but then there's also poison that like little skull guy that will shoot out and that'll damage you it's very good this was a fun game so the play controls got a 3.8 I don't know their the review is always kinda of funky they're always very generous or not generous enough on some of these So of course you gotta save the princess who's been kidnapped. And all of the mobs, like you, you fight like a Dracula like character and there's bats and stuff. Um, one of the things I don't like is, let me see if they have it, is one of the mobs I really hate. It's This one was really annoying because he would rock it back and forth so by the time he got over to him to kick him, he would um, zoom over to the other side. But you had power ups. I like the one where it was lightning that would shoot down and you would just hit um, select that and, and shoot them. But in the later stages there's these like sirens that make this awful piercing noise. Or they're harp harpies or something like that. Here they are. These guys were super annoying. The two winged creatures swooping down. They make this wee wee noise. And you fight them twice. They show up later again, too. I just, I don't like it when they purposely make, like, the enemy have that shrieky noise. It just hurts your ears. It's not really, it's just not pleasant. Oh. And then we have Worm, Journey to the Center of the Earth. This was a fun game. This one actually surprised me quite a bit. Um, it definitely has an anime feel to it, like it's it's based off of something. I just I need to look into what this is based off of. But it, it has like um, some like shooting areas and then some platforming where you got to go get keys. Um, there's limited resource though, like as you're going down, you can only shoot your ray gun so many times, otherwise you're going to run out. And then you, you kill a beholder-like creature. Protobiote monster. And then you talk to people, the possibility. So you gotta pick who you talk to, so you take less damage. I mean, it's, a, it's an unusual game, but it's pretty good. And the sprites are fairly good, so these cave ones, you're a fairly big sprite moving around. They're like, it's like these mole people, they're like kidnapping people and stuff and doing experiments. Oh, here we go. Oh. Do we, can we zoom out? I don't think we can zoom out. So we start from here, and we have the whole, whole level. Hmm. Do, do, do. So here we have the whole level. And of course, this is going to turn off. So, anyways. Alright. And then, of course, our poster. It 
we'll take a separate shot of this one. This is a pretty cool one. Move our drink out. There. So an F Zero poster. It's done in the comic, like a really nice comic book style. And it's in pretty good shape. Pull that back up. Then we'll get into our Game Boy section here. So we have Final Fantasy Adventure, Marble Madness, and Tecmo Bowl. So this one actually has the complete walkthrough of the Final Fantasy Adventure. This was my first RPG game. Um, I had it even before Link's Awakening. Um, it was I don't want to say it's not my fir the first RPG I beat. Because at one point I got stuck in the game, and I'll, I'll tell you later um, at what point I got stuck. It was like right near the end. But this is a really... I think this is a good RPG to have kids play. So people that are playing it for the first time, it's very basic. And it's, it's a good little game. I really enjoyed it. I played, replayed a chunk of it recently. And it, it's still really good. I mean, I, I have the, like, the music, I still have it, like, completely memorized. I can remember all the music from this game. So for a Game Boy, this was a really, really um, solid game to come out in 91. And you have the leveling up system with stamina, power, will, wisdom. And you're just this character that, that was in the arena. He was like a gladiator and he escapes. You go on this adventure, find this lady, um, and some guy that died. So here she, this guy is uh, the the guy that owns that tower. He turns out to be a vampire. And you get these um, weapon power ups. The sickle that was one of my favorite weapons. It would, it would spin around in circles so you could clear out a lot of stuff, like these um, little vine plants. It was just a really good weapon. Then you have the pickaxe, and then you kill a hydra. Really one of my favorite um, Game Boy games. I, I liked Link's Awakening more, but uh, this was a pretty good game for his time. Oh, and then the, the chain. Where you could grab onto stuff. That was pretty cool. And here you, this is where you rescue her from the vampire guy. There he is. Vanquish the vampire. And then you get the axe where you chop down the trees. the airship and then when you're in the desert you get the chocobo um, so this is the section I got stuck on when I was a kid um, there was a clue where it was you, to open up a cave door um, the only clue they gave you was palm trees and eight and for like literally so I got this around 92. Mm, so maybe like until 99. I could not figure out how to get past it. So I'd play the game for like maybe like a few minutes and then put away out of frustration. And I spent like literally years wandering around the desert because I couldn't figure out how to get past. And some random person in my high school, like we were talking about Game Boy games, and I was like, yeah, I'm stuck in this point. And they're just like, yeah, you walk in a figure eight around these pair of palm trees. And that unlocks it. So, like, literally I was stuck on this game forever. And just some random person, I don't even remember who it was. They just said, yeah, you walk around a figure eight. And that unlocks it. And then you, you pretty much, from there, I was so overpowered at that point. Because you play the game for, like, a few minutes here and there for, like, almost a decade. 
you pretty much beat the game at that point. But it was a it was a, it was a good game. So Tech Mobile, I was playing this. It's fun, but I don't really understand football that well. So I think it's a solid game if you just want like a little handheld football game. Um, the sounds are fine. The, there's some cute graphics, and then there's some um, little maneuvers, and you could pick a team. So you kind of have like all your your main game uh, teams. They don't use like the official names. They just have the city names. So you're like, you know, Minnesota is the Vikings, and San Francisco will be the 49ers, and so on. And at the time, that would have been the Los Angeles Raiders. So it's a fine, fine game if you feel like football and you want like a little handheld game to play around with. It it was fine. I I just didn't really understand the the maneuvers and stuff, so I did not do well. And then we have Marble Madness. So actually this, there was a tip in here that actually helped me get past a level that I got stuck on. So right here. So on level three, so you're going down. If you roll down right here, you'll get stuck. So instead you gotta take like the little wave mat and then pop off and then you'll hit the goal right away. Um, cause I kept getting stuck cause I would go this way. But, um, so actually that was the time that the Nintendo Power helped me there. So thank you Nintendo Power. But really, it's just a port of the N um, NES game. The music is really good on the Game Boy version. It, it's still, it's pretty good. And I mean... It, lo it looks fine. Um, I play it on the Mister on my TV. Um, on the Game Boy, like the original Game Boy, I, it would be kind of hard to play it with the detail. Um, maybe with the Pocket Game Boy, I think it would look pretty good. But definitely it looks pretty solid on the Mister um, on a pretty decent TV. And it sounds pretty good too. Then we have some Game Boy tips. I have R Type for the Game Boy. That's a pretty good game. So kick off. So click the Power Pod and attach it to the back of the R Type. Huh. I see. So it isn't even, it's just like a little glitch thing you can do. It's not even something that's going to help you out. And then F1 Racing, eh. And then, so this will let you know if the games are one player. What about them? Golf. The Game Boy Golf game, like just the generic um, Nintendo golf game, is actually pretty good on the Game Boy. And then coming soon, so Metroid 2. Um, I have that one with Sam, uh, Samus' Return. That was remade on the 3DS um, a while ago, and that was pretty good. But the Game Boy one, um, it, the downside is this one doesn't have the map, so you oftentimes you would have to draw your own map or just memorize it. I mean, other than that, I mean, that's a big fault, but it was still a pretty good game. And then here we have the top games. So, of course, Super Mario Land. I got that at the same time I got my Game Boy. So I had that and Tetris, and that was pretty good. This was the, um, Super Mario Land was the first game I ever beat as a kid. So I got this, mm, so I think in first grade, I got my Game Boy in first grade. That would have been the first game I ever I ever beat. 
And of course, Tetris, Final Fantasy Legend. Oh, there we have a WWF Superstar. The, the Game Boy wrestling games aren't, aren't particularly good. But still, it was wrestling was popular enough. The Hunt for Red October. And then Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Revenge. And here we have some gamer scores. Okay, here we go. So, it was fairly recent that I played um, Castlevania 4, and just the the controls are so good on it, like the being able to manipulate the whip and stuff. It it, it was so good. So here you can see all the different maneuvers, and then you power up the whip. And you can wave it and do funny little tricks. The round and round. I have um, Dracula's Curse. That's a pretty good one. But Castlevania 4, it's, it's pretty good. It's not too hard. And just like the general moving around, like usually like swinging in most games is like a nightmare, but it works really good on the Super Nintendo. I didn't like fall to my death. It was, it was pretty fair. Like the, yes, the other, the later games had better graphics, but I think this one had some of the best controls of like manipulating the main character. But I mean, it still looked pretty good too. And then SimCity. So I mainly played SimCity on the PC when I was a kid. Um, mainly SimCity 2000. That was a really good PC game. Um, I played this around on the uh, NES, uh, SNES. And it, it's very simple, but it's kind of fun. It's, it's a very relaxing game. Uh, you don't have a lot of um, little things you have to worry about. You just kind of build up your little city and then speed up the time and then just kind of add to it and you get more stuff um, like an arena, a zoo as you go and you can unlock more. And then you can um, activate disasters. There's also um, SimCity 2000 is also on the SNES too. Here you can get a Mario statue, trade expo, fountain, you can get a sister city, the library, you get the library pretty pretty quick, a bank, so they'll give you money. There's a casino, zoo, and then you have some scenarios. So then, um, this one instead of like a Godzilla-like creature, you have um, King Koopa. And they all kind of take place in different different eras. So 1961, um, that'd be the height of like Godzilla mania. And here we have Final Fight. Which is, this one is just the, this is the first one. So it only has one player. But I was playing through it and it's still pretty good even though, like, there's a lot of improvements to be made from it. Like, the arcade version's really good. But this one, it, it's okay. It could have, um, two player would make it a lot better. But playing through it, like, playing through Hadgar, you, you did really well. He could do, like, a lot of maneuvers. What a maneuver. It was really easy to do a lot of these. I like doing the pile driver. Then the headbutt. And the back toss. The back toss. Like a suplex or a belly to belly. 
and I flip him around. Cody's fine. I'd, I'd rather play as Hagar. Because most of his moves are kick-based. Or, um, I like the, the windmill punch. You spin around, you spin around. That one's really easy to do. And that one clears the enemies on both sides of you, so you don't get ganged up on. And it's a pretty short game. You just have, yeah, the three zones. Last two stages. No, there's five stages. So this is just the preview. Usually, um, I don't get past usually stage four. Unless I'm really, really trying hard. Alright, so here we have some different games. So, Emulator Boat Duel. Hmm. I don't think that's really a game for me. And then, Bo Jackson Baseball. Eh. Yeah. yeah, so Kickmaster was made by Taito. It's so weird that it isn't on the Famicom. It would have been so good on there. And it would have been so much cheaper. Oh well. Oh here we go. This is uh, the player's poll contest. Is to see American Gladiator. Oh that game that show was so good back in the nineties. You had like Blaze and Ice and Nitro. You could pretty much just make up like one of those like laser storm. It, it, they were probably a gladiator. You get to have a trip for four to see American Gladiator. And you can perform some of them, and you can meet them. That's so cool. Didn't they try to bring back American Gladiator not too long ago? You get game packs. You win a t-shirt. Oh, that's pretty cool. You could have got a Nintendo Power t-shirt. That would have been neat. No purchase necessary. So you get it. I wonder how much those are. That looks like a nice shirt. Here we have some some help guides. Star Tropics. That's such a good game. Um, the daycare I went to as a kid, like there, the son had this game, but he would he wouldn't let anyone play with it. He kept it in his room, and I always wanted to play the game so bad. But I have it now, so so there. And it is a good game. I even have the, the second one that came out. Like a sea wizard. This guy's got a nice Molico in there. His hobbies have martial arts, sports, drawing, and video games. Oh, this guy, he likes horseback riding and computers. And his favorite game is Crystallis. And so is his. He likes Castlevania 3. Baseball Stars. His baseball Stars are actually pretty good. So, finish Mega Man 3 with one man. That's pretty good. Mega Man 3 is pretty hard. Then you finish Blaster Master without losing a life. Blaster Master is not too hard. So here we have some tricks for Ninja Gaiden 3. That game, um, it's not very common, Ninja Gaiden 3. I think that one's actually a little pricey now. The, thir the first one, I think, is the best one. Then they're lost in Final Fantasy. I remember I borrowed Final Fantasy um, on the NES from a friend, but I wasn't allowed to save over the game. 
So I didn't borrow it for long. I gave it back. Uh, did, did it have two save slots? If not, so. Thomas, you're a jerk. Not letting me save on it. It's like, why would you load it out? That's dumb. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. So that was based off the movie. And then here you could send in your letters. Yeah. So Nintendo Power magazines, they're so charming. They're they're of their time, but they're they're fun to go back through. So here we have points, so So this is around when Battletoads first came out. So he they just got on the list, so the arcade game, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, that, that one's pretty good. And then Mega Man 3 is, is pretty good. Of course, Super Mario Brothers 3 is really good. Crystallis, um, it's a good game. And then, of course, Final Fantasy. Um, I have The Simpsons Bart vs. The Space Mutants. Eh, it's it's not, not good. Dragon Warrior 2 is good. That That's available on the Switch right now. Tetris, Star Tropics, Dr. Mario. I think Game Boy Dr. Mario is a lot of fun. Legend of Zelda, Mario Brothers 2, Double Dragon 3. I have that one. Tecmo Ball. Wizardry. Oh, DuckTales. DuckTales is a good game. And then Little Nemo and Dreamland. That's a good platformer, too. Uh, not going to come out again because it's tied to a movie property. We have Player's Picks. So this is kind of neat. You have the Player's Picks, the Pro Picks, and the Dealer Picks. So I always like comparing this list, like the the pros picks to others. So like earlier we saw the the guy the guys that that help with the Nintendo tips and tricks. They two of them they said they like Crystallis as one of their favorites. And then the dealer, so the mom and pop stores, what they think is a good sell. So they, they like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game, Mario 3, Tetris, Dr. Mario, Bases Loaded 2, uh, The Simpsons. The Simpsons were so big at the time because here we even have like a fake interview with Bart Simpson. Even though the game wasn't good, they, they figured parents would pick it up because even it shows up here as a game that people want. Mario 2, Tecmo Bowl, Mega Man, Double Dragon, you have WWF. Uh, more Double Dragon, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune, it, it's a fun game, but maybe not the NES version. I like the oh, Sega CD. That one's a fun version of it. Got Star Tropics. So here we see Metroid. Let's see. Final Fantasy, Star Tropics. So here we see a lot of uh, RPG show up here. The Immortal. That's on the Switch now, too. Shadowgate. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. You kind of have like a mix of sports games with some platformers and a, and a couple like couple RPGs. You have a lot of RPGs. And then here we see a lot of uh, like arcade and platforming games and some RPGs here. So Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior, Legend of Zelda. Then we have uh, Star Tropics. It's kind of like a mix between RPG and platforming here. Super Mario Brothers, Maniac Mansion, 
Crystallis is way down there, but still. So here we have Tailspin. Tailspin is kind of a funky game. It, it's hard, but it's, it's kind of fun. We have Adam's Family, Tom and Jerry, Flintstones, Terminator, Might and Magic. I played some of this one as a kid. It's not too bad. This one, uh, it's distorted a little bit. Hmm. So they look like screenshots from a TV there. Here's some gossip. Batman Return of the Joker. Bomberman 2, the original NES. Mr. Gimmick. So it's a little like character. Rocky. And then here's some new games coming up. Or no, these are games that are, yeah. Let's see. Carmen San Diego. Tiny Toon Adventures. That one's pretty good. Nightshade. That Nightshade's a weird one, but not bad. Mega Man 4. Contra Force. Good. Mm. And then for the Super Nintendo, we got Castlevania 4. Final Fight, SimCity, Populous. That one's not too bad. Wanders from Yees. So these are games in development. So Daria's Twin. That's a good one. Super Adventure Island. Homeland was meh. Super Battle Tank. Wonder Z's, another popular RPG series. Hmm. There's some good stuff. And then you can get some back issues. And next month is F Zero, Star Trek, Metroid. So this is a classic review, and then Belmont's Revenge. That one's pretty good too. Then we go to the back. Actually, and then we have a three-year-old sticker on there. But it's not a bad game. Then we have our triple pack. I had the one bundled with the, the Super Mario All-Star with Mario World. And then I had the older one that had the gray, gray zapper. And then I had the Game Boy system with the Tetris. So I think that will do it for today. Um, I have many more of these that we could go through. So if there's a particular volume you want me to check out, just leave a comment below and I hope you guys enjoy it. So thank you very much and we'll see you next time.